In today's video, I've got a massive amount of cleaning motivation for you. Over the last few days, I've been on top form and I have gotten so much done. And I thought I'd show you the method I used to keep myself motivated. I call it the spin the wheel method. And I use it when I've got a whole house clean, but I'm bored of just doing everything in the same order that I usually do. So what I do is I just input all the rooms that I need to sort into a generator website. This one's called Wheel of Names, I think. I see what it lands on and then I get started. And as you can see, the first room that popped up was the landing. I know it's not really a room, but it really needed sorting. It's had bags that have been lingering there from our declutter for weeks and it's been really irritating me looking at them. So I thought, first I'll put a wash in and then I'll get rid of them. And by get rid of, I mean put them in Charlie's car so he has to do something about them and take them to the charity shop. Look, that looks better already. The black bag was full of Charlie's clothes. He did a declutter as well about three months ago and that bag has been sat there ever since. He kept telling me he was going to sort them when he had a day off and then he just didn't. And I finally had enough this day because it just looks horrible. Obviously, it wasn't my place to move them or to give them away because they're not my clothes, so. And I wasn't entirely sure on what his plan was for them. Guarantee they won't stay another three months in his car, though. As soon as they're in there, they'll be a nuisance. I don't know how he managed to walk past it on the landing for three months, but they'll irritate him in his car. Anyway, as you can see, the skirting boards are absolutely filthy. As was the bin, it smelt so bad I had to wash it. I can't remember the last time I actually moved the bin and the laundry basket and cleaned behind them. It's not something I usually manage to get round to, but I was just in one of those moods. You know those moods where you want to get everything done and you want to clean every nook and cranny? That is rare for me, so rare. So I wanted to take advantage of it. And I hope watching this gives you the biggest boost of motivation as well. I know a lot of you have been waiting for another long form video. And I do apologise that it's taken me so long to put a new one out. But I have a lot going on in my life. I'm a mum. I also work outside of the home. I'm juggling a lot of things. And filming and editing these videos takes time. I'm sure I could get a few more long form videos out a month. But they wouldn't be of the same quality. You know, I want to make sure that the videos are worthy of you. That they're filmed well, edited well. And that they have meaningful content. So yeah, all I can ask is that you bear with me on that. I want to deliver high quality content and I hope that you can make do with the shorts and the shorter long form videos that I put out in between. I know shorts aren't everybody's cup of tea but they are some people's and some people are here just for the shorts so I like to cater for everybody too. And I really enjoy making all different video lengths. I find it really tests my creativity and there can be different versions of myself as well. And it really helps me out as a busy mum to be able to put out some shorter videos when life gets hectic. Because at the end of the day, I absolutely love making these videos for you. And I'm of the opinion that putting out something is better than putting out nothing at all. Anyway, we're on to the bedroom now. And as you can see, I'm trying to clean a windowsill that has marker pen all over it. The boys were drawing last night and it seeped through the paper onto the windowsill. So, <laughs> oh well. I've got a lovely little print of some kind of frog. And as you can see, again, this clean was just so overdue. I don't know if anyone else is the same as me, but I spend so much time just cleaning up toys and pots and all of that kind of thing that I find it hard to do cleans like this. And there's just not enough time. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but doing the windowsills and behind the laundry baskets just not top of my priority list. But when I do get a chance to do it, I go for it. I find this kind of cleaning so therapeutic and so satisfying. It's just hard to get round to it when you're distracted by other things like bags of old laundry on the top of your landing. I've got a real beer mob on it about that, but it really gets to me and I'll tell you why. Things looking cluttered around the house saps all of my motivation. I'll give you an example. Our kitchen needs a massive declutter. And Charlie has this habit of putting things that we don't have a place for on top of the table and on top of the chairs that are on top of the table. And I have an illogical brain. I just do. So when it gets like that, I just add to it. Even though it annoys me, I just think, oh, what's the point? And I just put things on top of it too. Because the amount of times I have cleared that table only for things to be put back on top of it the next day, oh, it just annoys me. And so things like that, and then that bag on top of the landing, it just makes me think, what is the point of me putting all of this effort in cleaning the house when it still looks messy because we don't have places for things or things haven't been taken to the tip? And to a certain extent, it's neither of our fault because we have such a small house and not enough storage space. 
By the way, all of that hair I just hoovered up was mine. I'd just given myself a haircut before I filmed this video. But yeah, you'll see what I mean when I do the kitchen declutter video. That's coming up very soon. Or I say very soon. We'll see. But we really do have limited storage space. So a lot of the time the house looks messy purely because of that. And it can be a bit demoralising. But hey ho, you've got to look at the positives, haven't you? We've got a roof over our heads. We've got a healthy family. We've got clean water. Nothing to complain about, really. And we're on to the kitchen. No, but you do have to have a good vent sometimes, don't you? It's healthy to let your frustrations out. And when you do that, a lot of the time you find other people who are going through exactly the same thing. And it helps them and you help each other. It does wind some people up when you do it on social media, though. A few months back, I did a short about cleaning in the hot weather. And people were fuming that I had the audacity to be uncomfortable in British sun. It's funny what people will get wound up over on the internet, though. Uh, <laughs> I had a comment yesterday on another short where I was cleaning the floors with Ike. And someone put, do you think you're the only person with floors and kids? <laughs> what do you mean? She was like, why, oh, why do we have to watch people cleaning their houses? Well, funnily enough, mate, you don't have to watch. You can just scroll on. That's the beauty of social media. I think people just like being wound up, honestly. Gives me a good chuckle, though, and I can't complain about that. I meant to mention the reason I'm in my pyjamas now is because I had to have a shower after I finished the bedroom because I was sweating and I smelt like a dung beetle. As you can probably tell, I had a great old time cleaning this windowsill. These kind of cleans are right up my alley. It's so relaxing. I've had a lot of people ask if I can share the products I use to clean with. And honestly, I'm not loyal to any particular product except probably Sif Lemon Kitchen Cleaner. I love that. I use it on everything. But no, to be honest, I pick my cleaning products based on what's on offer and what smells nice. That's pretty much it. I wish I could be an informative kind of cleaning channel, but I'm just not. I'm winging it. <laughs> but anyway, back to what I was saying about hate comments and social media. I can get in my head about it a lot, this channel. And it's not the people that hate that I worry about. It's the lovely, supportive, loyal people here. You know, I want to live up to your expectations and keep putting out videos that you enjoy. And I put a lot of pressure on myself throughout the whole creative process. Ideas, filming, editing, voiceovers, because I don't want to let you down. Just the fact that we've gotten to this place is absolutely baffling to me. 85,000 of you. And because of that, sometimes I think I overthink things. Like earlier, for example, I sat down to do the voiceover for this video and I had to stop after a few minutes. Because I just thought, this is awful, Remy. Who wants to listen to you ramble on about Charlie not taking a bag out? Absolute drivel. So I had to leave and compose myself and remind myself why I actually started this channel and why I do this. It's not meant to be stressful. It's not meant to be this perfect movie-esque kind of video. It's meant to be real. Warts and boring conversations about recycling and all. I'm here to be a virtual friend and keep people company through stressful and monotonous tasks i don't have to live up to my own unrealistic expectations i just have to show up as who i am on that day and hope the right people the people who need the video find the video and you always do and i'm so happy about that but yeah i guess it's just part and parcel of navigating a channel that got bigger than i expected a lot quicker than i expected because behind the screen i'm just a normal lady from a small town who works at asda <laughs> And the fact that I've got so many people watching from all different areas of the world, it's just very surreal to me. Anyway, let's talk more about this spin the wheel method of cleaning. You've seen me write lists and you've seen me use timers, but the thing I love about this method is there aren't any time constraints. You can do it over a day or over a week. It's great for if you've got a big overwhelming project and you need to just keep coming back over time. You can't just do it in one big go. I actually use it on the days I've got extra time when I want to do little niggly projects or specific cleans like the ones you see now, I barely ever get a chance to clean the cupboards. As a busy person, most of the cleans I do or the videos you've seen so far are me just racing against the clock, like my 10 minute timer challenge. But this way is a lot more thorough and a lot more relaxing. And after I finished the kitchen, I thought, right, you've done loads today, you've done enough, we'll stop and we'll come back to it when we want to. And that was really freeing to me because usually I can't rest until I've got everything done. But for some reason, because I'd done my little wheel, I felt more chilled about it. I knew what my next step was and I could get back to it when I had the energy. 
I don't know what the psychology behind that is. I think it's because I've made it into a kind of game. That's what a lot of my videos and cleaning methods are about, making things into challenges and games. It just helps you get started and helps you get through it. I don't know why, but it does. Probably something to do with my mental age, eh? But no, life's short and being an adult can be really, really stressful. So why not make things into little games? Do you see that little discoloured bit at the bottom of the cupboard there? If anyone could tell me how I get rid of that, I would be very, very grateful. Mushroom used to have a habit of pushing a ball between the cupboards and the oven and then trying to scratch it out and she ended up biting chunks out of the board. The problem is it's not like wood, it's kind of this plastic material over the top of it. It's cheaply made and I'm not able to replace the cupboards because we're renting. I tried filling it in with this kind of wood putty material and then painting over it, but it still looks bumpy and discoloured, so I don't know if I was using the right thing. So if anyone has any tips, please. I don't know if you're watching the screen there, but Ike just woke up. I did this entire kitchen whilst he was napping. He napped for about two hours, which was very good for me doing this kitchen, but I'm going to regret it come the night time. Sometimes you have to weigh up the pros and cons of a toddler nap, don't you? At the minute, I'm working on encouraging independent play. And oh my goodness, the guilt, the guilt of being a mum. But I practice attachment parenting. And with my first son, I was pretty much at his beck and call for absolutely everything. And I think I struggled to set boundaries in certain areas of our lives. Of course, you want your children to know that you're always there and always going to be there for them. For cuddles and reassurance and all of that lovely stuff. But with my eldest, I was absolutely burning myself out trying to entertain him through the day as well. And I don't think that's healthy for him. Definitely wasn't for me. After seven years of parenting, I've learned it's good for children to be bored. It encourages them to use their imagination and their initiative and find things to do. And they can work on things like problem solving and all sorts that will set them up for success as adults. It had gotten to the point with my eldest that I couldn't complete any task in the day because he was always wanting me to do things with him. And that's where the mum guilt comes in because you never want to turn down quality time with your kids, do you? But at the same time, not being able to do simple things like wash the pots or sit down with your thoughts for five minutes, that's not good for anybody in the long run. Because I know people say it all the time, but you cannot pour from an empty cup. And I think the reason that I didn't put any boundaries in place was because I felt guilty that he was an only child. He had nobody else to play with. And my ex, his dad, he didn't want any more kids. And I just felt awful for Rudy. Because he's a really sociable little boy. I never was as a kid. I was happy enough to just be with myself. And I still am. <laughs> but I was really conscious of kind of stunting his social development. Um, I don't know why. It's just guilt inducing being a mum, isn't it? He went to a playgroup, he went to a lovely forest playgroup where they did everything outdoors and I took him to loads of toddler groups as well but I still felt this massive obligation whenever we were pottering around the house to entertain him, to play with him all the time whenever he asked. Now with Ike I think I've found a decent balance. If I'm trying to get things done around the house I feel okay with saying not now baby, you go and play and then mummy will come and play later on. And oh my goodness, he plays so happily. He potters around with his cars, he chats and sings to himself and it's lovely to watch. And I can get the things I need to get done, done. Which means the house is nicer to live in, I'm nicer to be around. And then I have that energy and enthusiasm to then sit and spend this quality time with them later on in the day. And it is real quality time too. Whereas before I was playing, but I was not really enthusiastic about it. And I hated that. It's just hard, isn't it? We're always learning as parents and it's so hard to just find that balance. Because the last thing you want to do is mess your kids up at the end of the day. And as you can see, we're on to the second day of the spin the wheel challenge. And I've started on the boys room, which was next on the wheel. It's an absolute pigsty as usual, because I still haven't gotten round to the declutter in this room. When will I get round to it? I don't know. It will happen when it happens. But yeah, as a messy person and a person with executive dysfunction, becoming a parent was very interesting. Because in order for my mind and my surroundings not to descend into absolute chaos, I have to have very rigid schedules and routines. And obviously when you have kids, a lot of that becomes impossible. And I wouldn't want to subject them to any kind of rigid routines or anything like that. So it took a long while for me to kind of adapt after becoming a mum. 
one of the things that hits you like a truck when you become a parent and you're neurodivergent is not having any alone time. I am extremely, extremely introverted. I love my own company. And after any big social interaction, I used to have to take probably a day out to just recoup from that interaction and just spend it in quiet and with me. So that was a real adjustment for me. And on top of that, after research, I decided attachment parenting was the parenting style for me, which meant my babies were always close to my body. I breastfed. They slept close by to us. So I really chose to never be alone. But even despite my nature, that was the parenting style that made the most sense to me and what I thought would be best for them developmentally and emotionally. And when you become a parent, your kids need to trump your own, don't they? But that's the main thing I'd tell any neurodivergent parent or, sorry, person considering becoming a parent to think about. Whether you're going to be able to self-regulate well enough to be calm and consistent for your child. Will you be able to deal with overstimulation and someone always wanting you and someone constantly being on your body without losing your temper? It's something I never, ever considered before I became a mum. Because I'd unconsciously built this environment around me with habits and routines. I had a lot of time to myself. I had a lot of time for creative projects. I read a lot of self-help books. And I thought I was this Zen warrior and nothing could make me lose my cool. But then take away all the things I used to emotionally regulate. Take away my alone time. Take away my sleep. Take away my self-help books that I used to spend hours a day reading. And then you quickly realise, ah, yes, I am, in fact, very, very flawed. (laughs) And now I've got to find ways to make sure this does not impact my children. I've been on a journey of self-discovery, I'll tell you that. It's interesting, though, because a lot of women with, say, ADHD or autism, they don't realise they actually have it because they're so good at masking and mirroring social interactions and, like I said, finding ways to set up their environment perfectly that they don't realise they have these issues until they become a parent and triggers come up and they have no time to themselves to regulate. And I think it needs to be spoken about more because you end up having this whole group of women who are so excited to become mums. They know they'll be great at it. They're loving, they're nurturing, they're funny, they're creative. They know they can make the best life for their kids. And then they're suddenly faced with the day-to-day reality of it all. And they are so overwhelmed. They can't keep the house clean. They can't remember appointments. They're feeling touched out, struggling to maintain friendships and relationships. And they end up thinking they're complete failures of people when really all of their coping mechanisms have just been taken away and they're completely overstimulated. Obviously, to a certain extent, this happens to every parent. And entering into parenthood can be a lonely experience. Even more so when people only discuss the good things and leave out the rest. So I try to talk about all aspects of parenting on this channel. Anyway, I honestly don't think I've cleaned these windows in about six months. It's very out of character for me, but I told you I got so much done in these two days. It was great, I was feeling so accomplished and the house was sparkling. I know it's better to just keep on top of things so it doesn't get like this in the first place. But you know what, it can be so much more satisfying cleaning something that actually needs cleaning. When you can see it transform from dirty to pristine. It's like wiping the cobwebs off your brain. And that's the boys' bedroom done. And next on the wheel was... The living room. Did you enjoy that moment of silence there? I know a lot of people don't like that I talk all the way through my videos, but you know, that's my thing and there are plenty of other cleaning videos out there where people don't do that, so. I like to have a good chat and give people a pep talk. And it's therapeutic for me to get things off my chest as well. Anyway, my main focus for the living room was giving the walls a freshen up. Living with two boys and a dog, the walls get grubby, as you can see. So I always keep a pot of the wall paint just to touch things up every now and then. It doesn't make it look perfect, but it always looks so much better after I do it. For about a week, tops. But it's never going to be perfect with kids, is it? And it doesn't bother me at all. Spillages and handprints on the wall and stepping on Lego, it all comes with the territory. And I'm not going to stress them out or myself out over it. I say it in a lot of my videos, but this is their home too. And I want them to feel at home and not be walking on eggshells. I remember being absolutely terrified to spill a drink at home. And I just think, I don't want my kid to be scared of having an accident around the house. 
or feeling like they have to hide that accident from me in case I blow up. An accident's an accident. And I know grubby handprints on the wall isn't technically an accident, in the same way spilling a drink is, but honestly, they don't notice they're doing it. They're constantly touching and rolling on the walls while they're playing. No idea why or what that's about, honestly. And I never realise how much they actually touch the walls until I'm sat there and I look at it and I think, oh my God, that looks absolutely revolting. But yeah, if I called them out every time I hand touched the wall, I would never stop nagging them. And I don't want that. It is what it is. I've got my trusty spare paint and covering it all up is actually really relaxing. As you can see, I'm still on my window cleaning spree. Just watch the bottom of those windows and see how much better they look after I've cleaned them. I don't know where the boys were this day, but I was home alone. I got my autumny candle on. I've been re-watching Friends on Netflix and I was just putting around and painting. It was great. I was in a great mood. The fact that it was raining made me feel extra cosy and content as well. I absolutely love it when it's raining and I'm all snug in the house. I took the opportunity because the boys were out as well to wash the pillowcases and the blankets and make everything smell lovely because it's just easier when I'm home alone. I'll be redecorating the kitchen and the living room in the future and putting some colour on the walls. I'm hoping that'll minimise the grubby appearance. For the living room, I'm thinking a nice peach or apricot colour. What do you think? I need to redo all of the window sills. Like, you can see that's like a stain of some kind of paper. I can't even remember, but I can't get rid of it from cleaning. So I'm going to sand and repaint those as well. Anyway... I get asked quite a lot, now my following's growing, do I get recognised, like, when I'm in the street or in public? And I got recognised for the first time the other week in Legoland. And I have been absolutely reeling over it ever since. Because I can be so, so awkward in real life, right? So awkward. Just tell me, if you were in this scenario, if you were the lady that came up to me, would you take this the wrong way? Because I don't know if I'm overthinking it. She was so lovely. She came up to me and she was like, oh, I really love your videos. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. That's so weird. And if you're that lady and you're watching now, oh, I really didn't mean it as to come across as you're weird. Just the, the situation's weird because I'd never been recognised before. Then in the space of like a week, it happened again at Lakeside Arts in Nottingham. I made a point of not saying that's so weird this time, though. <laughs> oh. I embarrass myself so much. I've always been like it. Once, when I was pregnant with Rudy, my eldest, I used to work on the customer services desk at Primark. And I was around eight months pregnant. I had polyhydramnius as well, so I was absolutely huge. And I was serving this customer and we were chatting and she kind of looks me up and down and goes, how long have you got left? Now, any normal person would take that as to mean how long left until you have the baby. Oh no, not me. I replied... Oh, only half an hour. I finish at five. <laughs> she just looked at me, gone out, smiled and walked off. My colleagues were just looking at me like, really? <laughs> Sometimes I can be really ditzy in conversation. It takes a while for me to register what people are saying. But I just want you to know, if you ever come up to me in public and I say something odd, please don't take it personally. I am just awkward. <laughs> But anyway, if you look at the wall behind me, you can see it's almost dry. It's just the patches, but it looks so much better and so much more clean. Look at that. So cosy. This day got me really excited for the autumn and winter months. October, November, December, by far my favourite time of the year. And then there was just one more obstacle to tackle. For those of you that have been here a while, you know I was going to get a stair basket. Well, I did and it didn't work. It just ended up overflowing and just causing more chaos. And I know a lot of you get concerned about the stairs being a tripping hazard. We're really working on not cluttering up the stairs. And honestly, it does get cleared every day. But we're making a point now of pushing everything to the side so there's at least one clear path. Eventually, fingers crossed, nothing will get left on there. But everyone in the house is learning and we're all trying to break habits and form new ones. And it's a slow process, but we're getting there. Anyone who's followed along right from the first cluttered house clean video... We'll see how far we've come and how much we've actually improved in keeping things and keeping on top of things. I'm definitely a work in progress and I always will be, but I'm doing my best and that's the main thing, isn't it? Anyway, just finishing off with Dr. Bettman's carpet cleaner and the video is almost done. As always, I hope you had a great time here. I hope you found some motivation and I hope you have a great rest of your day.